Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. Well, I decided I'm going to do another one of those uh, five random knife videos, but the only thing that's going to join these knives together in this case is that they're all in white smooth bone. I got a lot of white smooth bone knives, but uh, it seems like people aren't that interested in seeing them one at a time, so I figured I'd do five at once. Uh, but as you can tell, I got seven here, and uh, so two of these knives are going to have to go. And the, the two that are going are first this one. I talked about this one a little bit before. And it's basically similar to an Okapi. So I've got also the Cold Steel Kudu. So I'm going to review this knife along with those other uh, two knives in a different video. And then this knife, well, this is actually a inexpensive modern folder that happens to be a white smooth bone. So I'm going to talk about this knife in a different video too. I've got a series on inexpensive folders, uh, modern folders, so I'm going to do that one and that. That leaves us with these five knives. Uh, all in white smooth bone, that's the only thing that combines them together. Okay, we're going to start here with this uh, stiletto by uh, Steel Warrior, so a Jim Frost company. I was not expecting much from it because, after all, it is a Jim Frost company, and uh, I have bought knives from Frost before that have been truly disappointing. Um, but this is uh, one of those exception knives. Uh, this is a uh, seven-inch stiletto, so four inches closed with a three-inch blade. And all in all, uh, Frost did a pretty decent job, at least on this knife. Who knows about the quality control? Yours might absolutely suck. But in any case, nice uh, brass bolsters on it. Uh, the bone is nice and smooth. You can feel the pins a little bit, but not too badly. Um, not as well made as like a uh, Rough Rider, but Rough Rider doesn't make stilettos. If they did, I would buy one of theirs. But um, this actually is not a bad stiletto uh, for the Steel Warrior line. The blade opens the way stiletto blades are supposed to open. So one, two, and then snapping open. And closing does the same thing. There's one, two, and snapping closed. And uh, so good blade movement on it. The fit and finish is not bad. Remember, this is only a $15 knife, so I'm not expecting uh, a terrific fit and finish. But uh, for a $15 knife, uh, I would say this is really good. Uh, the pen lock on there is very strong, holds really well. And the lock is a little hard, but uh, you press down and it does close. Um, the only problem I have with the knife is the uh, blade shape. I wish it would have been a bayonet style blade instead of the more uh, German style, I believe it, the, the typical clip blade. I like the ones that have, uh, you know, that look more like a bayonet blade. I'll, I'll insert a picture of it. Um, the only other problem I had with it is, you know, the whole name on there, Steel Warrior. I think that is one of the goofiest names. I'm sure it appeals to, uh, you know, to the teenagers and everyone who's like, oh, wow, Steel Warrior got samurai on it and all that. But um, to me, that it's just a, a joke of a name and it just drives me nuts. But uh, the knife itself, not badly made, especially for a frost product. And I'm very happy with it. My only problem with it is this is not the style of stiletto I want. I want the bayonet blade and I want a nine inch stiletto. So, uh, so I guess that's my appeal. So if anyone out there knows of a company that makes a nine inch stiletto and in white smooth bone, uh, for, you know, under 75, preferably under 50, but under 75, uh, shoot me a note because I'd really like to get a white smooth bone um, nine inch stiletto and preferably with the bayonet style blade instead of the clip blade. Now next up we're going to move on to this uh, bartender knife and uh, this knife is this style of knife has been around for a long time and this is actually based off of the uh, old cased gunstock uh, pattern jackknife and what case did was they uh, 
altered their gun stock jack into a bartender knife and um and then sold it as a bartender knife so um and then other companies have gone ahead and um uh, copied it ever since then um and to me it has it's it's a really cool knife but it has it's actually lacking in some aspects when it comes to actually being a decent bartender tool. Um, what you have on it are the blades that came with the uh, with the gunstock jack. So you've got this wonderful uh, spear blade, and then you have a secondary pin blade on there. And as you can tell here, this is uh, one by U.S. Classic, and uh, I bought it simply because no one seemed to have a white smooth bone. Uh, bartender knife uh, except for US Classic and US Classic put this really cool uh, whiskey bottle shield on there so that was pretty uh, decent too I guess that could also be a wine bottle which would make sense with the corkscrew but in any case so these are the two blades you end up with it with on it and then um, the other blade you have in the back here is um, the uh, label cutter so this is for cutting the label around the uh, edges of the wine bottle so that you can then peel away the foil or anything like on your champagne bottles or the uh, cutting the wax around the uh, edges so that you can actually pull the cork. And then you've got the cork screw on the back side. And so obviously you screw it in, pull out your cork. Um, not a bad design, but for the life of me, I don't understand why case would come out with a uh, bartender tool that doesn't have a cap lifter on it and that's what always drove me nuts about these knives everyone has since continued to just go ahead and recopy this knife over and over and over and all I kept thinking is why don't you take this goofy blade here or this goofy blade here and remove it and replace it with a cap lifter so you can also open bottles with it because then it would truly be a bartender type tool as it is now it's basically a jackknife that you can open wine bottles with but uh, if you're dealing with beer bottles or something like that well you're screwed so nice cool looking knife very traditional pattern but um, not the world's greatest bartender tool because it doesn't have a cap lifter now this next one, um, I've been told a lot about it, but I really don't know if any of the information is true or not. I've been told it is a Parker Frost knife from back in the 1990s or so, and that it was actually made in Japan. Nowhere on here does it say it was made in Japan. The uh, tank stamp there says Honest Abe. Hopefully Honest Abe was honest and that it is actually made in Japan. Backside just says surgical steel. Um, it's basically similar to your um, in size to a classic SD, except if you notice, it's kind of uh, squared off and everything, and it's got white smooth bone handles. One of these days, I'm going to take a classic SD and put white smooth bone handles on it. That's one of my plans, uh, just to rehandle a, a classic SD and white smooth bone. Uh, one of the big problems with this knife, though, if you notice, it does not have a, a key, key ring. There's no way to actually hook this into your key ring, which might be a good idea considering it's white smooth bone, but that basically means you got to slip carry it or something like that. Um, you have the old crosscut file on it, uh, which a lot of people like, and you've got your little uh, tip there for cleaning out your nails which uh, I could probably use right now. And then also a pair of scissors on the other side. A little scissors, they're not really big, but uh, you know, paper-wise, uh, if I can get it in there, they feel like they have a little bit of serration or something, which helps them grip the paper. I know it's not called serration in scissors, but uh, when I learn the word, I'll put it in there, but uh, they cut decent enough for scissors on this size knife. So, all in all, I'm happy with it. I have no idea if it is actually a Parker Frost knife or not. And uh, I also have no idea if it was actually made in Japan because it doesn't say where it was made. All it says is Honest Abe. Uh, but still, 
kind of a cool little knife for uh, the white smooth bone collection and let's move up to this one now this one is definitely a kind of funky looking knife and it is a pipe tool actually and uh, considering the blade is not actually sharp I guess some people would not even consider it a, uh, a, a knife but just a pipe tool in any case it's pretty cool I like the shape of it I don't smoke a pipe so I don't know how well it would work or anything but uh, uh, when I look at it I think that it might work just fine uh, the um, here's the uh, pin for cleaning out your uh, the tip on your pipe it is a little squared off but uh, got a nice little tip not extremely sharp so you're not going to damage any kind of wood or or scratch the plastic or anything like that but uh, it's uh, long enough, I think, to clean out the tip of your pipe and such. And then um, the blade for cleaning out the pipe. See how you got that little cut there so you can actually get your finger right on there and really scrape the bowl. And that's the other thing. This is not sharp. I guess you could sharpen it. Again, this is um, stainless steel Japan, so at least this one does say Japan. And from what I understand, this is a Parker Frost pipe tool so uh, kind of cool looking I kind of like it. It, it it's different than all the other pipe knives I've seen out there I love the shape of it you can actually uh, feel it better in your hand and you got the tamper a good distance away from uh, the bone and everything so if you're tamping down the uh, hot tobacco I think that would work out pretty well I don't know uh, maybe someone out there who smokes a pipe would tell me if this design looks good for them or not I do like the fact that uh, if, if this is actually for scraping the bowl of your pipe, this kind of makes sense not to be extremely sharp and, and for it to be rounded at the bottom there so that when you're getting it down in the bottom of the bowl of your pipe and you're turning and scraping the edges and stuff, you're not actually cutting up uh, the bowl itself but just scraping off the, uh, the uh, ash residue and everything. So pretty cool little pipe tool and that brings us to the last knife which is the one all the way at the top and that is a no-name desk knife that I came across uh, in white smooth bone I was looking for a white smooth bone desk knife saw the one by case that looks about the same as this one does but the case one cost uh, over a hundred dollars and I wasn't about to spend a hundred dollars on it yet uh, as you can tell here, it's got that dreaded word on the top there, Pakistan. But uh, all in all, it's really not that bad of a knife. And I think uh, once I polish up that blade, it's no longer going to say Pakistan either. Um, got your nice worn cliff blade. Feels good in the hand. Overall length of this thing. Yeah, look at this, a different ruler for a change. Um, right at, uh, what, about six and a quarter inches or so? And uh, the blade length is uh, under three inches, about two and three quarters of an inch. Got a nice little bolster on it and everything. But the shape is uh, really good and comfortable in the hand. And the leather sheath, um, not a bad leather sheath. And uh, knife fits it real well, goes in there well. Well stitched, nice and thick. And as you can tell, there's nothing on the back here because this is a desk knife. For those not familiar with a desk knife, it's a knife that you would use in an office. And it's used for cutting up paper and uh, opening envelopes and stuff. So it's basically nothing but a fancy uh, letter opener, except uh, the blade is sharp. Uh, I believe the blade steel in this is 440. That's what I read when I picked it up. I think Elk Ridge also makes this, and I think what happened is somebody decided to just start making them without putting the Elk Ridge name on it. Uh, and the only other company that I know that makes a, a decent desk knife is uh, is a Case, and theirs are expensive. I think they start around $70, $80, but they're using a pretty decent steel on it. Usually it's not the uh, true sharp surgical steel. I wish... Uh, case would actually make a desk knife for a working man because not everyone who works at a desk uh, is you know high-class businessman who's making you know in the uh, six-figure line some people are making less than the six figures and could also use a desk knife uh, you know with a Delrin handle and uh, and uh, a lower quality steel that could go for you know uh, maybe 30 or 40 dollars as opposed to 
eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars. I've actually asked the folks at Smoky Mountain Knife Works why don't they come out with a desk knife and an office knife um, for all of us uh, knife collectors out there because that would make a, a terrific set. If you don't know what an office knife is, I'll, I'll show you uh, an office knife along with this nest desk knife in, a, in another video. But there's my uh, inexpensive white smooth bone desk knife that actually does get used. I actually keep this one right around here so that when I need to cut stuff up or open a new box for a knife or something, I can grab my desk knife and do it. So there you have it i should bring them back out there's the desk knife this little uh keychain knife a pipe tool a bartender tool and a four inch stiletto because i can't get a five inch stiletto but there's uh five new random knives uh to show talk about uh if there's any other kind of randomness uh that i can think of i'll also bring those out but for this one, five random knives that all share white smooth bone handles. I'll talk to you more about some other five knives sometime in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.